Have you ever felt like you're running a race you can't win? You think about the life you'd like, then you compare it with the life you're living now and the things you're doing and you just can't reconcile how you get to that dream life, how you get to that point of being financially free. And it feels like the more you move forward, there's someone or something or some legislation that seems to drag you down to square one and leaves you in a state of hopelessness. And over the last couple of months, as we've as I've traveled the country and been part of this really incredible program called the Value Creation Challenge and learned how to build, I guess, fintech businesses in this case, I began to realize that there are certain mistakes and there's certain ways that we've allowed ourselves to think that don't serve us, but actually keep us in a space or in a place where we remain small and eliminate the possibility of us getting to that rich life or that financial freedom. So today we're going to talk to you about eight mistakes, beliefs, actions, whatever you call them, pitfalls, that we make that keep us from becoming financial and cheap, that keep us broke, depressed, and dejected. And hopefully when we talk about these things, you'll find where you are. And the most important thing, we break free from. Number one, I've noticed that many of us have allowed ourselves to believe the biggest financial lie ever told. And that's the lie of retirement. This belief that all we need to do is work hard for years and years. And you know, you're accumulating uh, money on the side so that you can live your life, your best life in your 60s. So you work through your youth so you can enjoy a couple of years when you're probably at your weakest, supposedly. I don't know, but that just seems terribly wrong. And when, we, when you look at retirement, you start looking at it, it doesn't work. If it works, lots of people would be retiring financially stable. But did you know that the world now, in the world now as it is, 97 percent of the population will never reach financial freedom. People who are waiting on their retirement, I'll give you a stat in South Africa, only 6% of the population is set up so that they can live the same standard of living that they have now or better after they hit retirement age. For the majority, it's downsizing. So you think you're going to a great party, you're going to cost-cutting, depression, and all these things. When you look at the medical data, it shows that one in every three, actually two in every three retired individuals suffer from some form of depression related to them stopping working, losing relationships, the financial stress that comes with the risk of potentially running out of money. So maybe let's stop believing in that lie. Because truth be told, before the 1940s, before 1930s, no one retired. We all worked till we died. And that may be something worth reviewing. Maybe we'll talk about it another time. But the second belief that really doesn't serve us is we believe that we missed our chance. I didn't win the birthday lottery. I'm now too old. It's too late for me to, to do anything. Oh, I've got, I like this one. I work for the worst boss. This guy or this lady hates me, so I'm never gonna get the promotion. I'm never gonna get the promotion. Um, the company just, the boss takes care of themselves. I'm paid too little. <laughs> or if you're African like some of us, you know, my ancestors don't like me. The truth is, in as much as there are people that will play a part in your financial journey, the responsibility really belongs to us to change where we're going. So it's more up to us to make the decisions, to do the things. No one stops you from starting a business. No one stop, is stopping you from figuring out what people need done and getting it done and charging them for your service. No one stops you from going and finding another place to work or creating your own place to work. There's this really cool book. I love the title. I haven't read the book yet. And it says, get so good that they can't ignore you. I like to believe that if you get so good at what you do that they can't ignore you, and you get to a point where you value what you bring to the table. You can get to a point where you can charge what you want. If they don't pay you what you want, you can create a, a business or a company where you get to pay yourself what you want. So it's never too late. The third thing is a practice and something we do. 
and that is we overspend on things that don't bring money to us but take money from us what you'll notice when you start to study people who have built tremendous wealth is they've figured out how to create cash flow from themselves they buy these remarkable assets with the money that comes from their investments not their salary they're not using their salary they're using the income from the investments to buy these wonderful things that some of us use our salaries to do and they don't invest in things that don't just that, that, that don't generate income from them so some of us like to buy shoes and all these things look very nice but what is it doing for you how does it bring back some of the money it's taken out from you i'm not saying don't dress up but at least ask yourself with what I'm doing, how can some of this at least pay something back to me? How can it generate cash flow so it can take away the need for me to work? The worst thing is sacrificing time for money and making sure, and, and where you need the money to pay the bills. What could happen if we started creating investments and assets that make money for us so that our time is freed up to do other things and we don't necessarily need to work? So, Maybe the first point is to look at how we spend money. And that could change things. The third thing is we believe that we are consumers. That my job is to be a, a customer. That there's someone out there that miraculously, they get to think all the great ideas, they create all the products, and I'm just fortunate to buy what they've given me. We, you never see yourself as an owner. Like when I, when I get home, and whenever we buy groceries, I ask myself, I'm buying all these groceries from these different companies. I'm helping them make money. The owner of that company is making money every time I buy groceries, every time I buy an appliance, every time I buy a laptop. The question is, how am I making money each time I buy? Could I not be an owner? And that's where stock markets come in. Like, I make it a point to own as much as I can of the stuff I use. So if I buy juice, if I buy drinks, like if I buy Coca-Cola, best believe I'm going to own shares in Delta. So that each time I buy, I know I'm pre preparing myself for a future dividend. If I buy groceries, why not own a bit of OK? Talk about companies in tomorrow. If I call on my phone a lot, why not? Each time I make a call, I'm also owning a, a share in Econet or any of these other companies that, have, that, that are available for the public. So when, when I buy, I'm not just a consumer, I also an owner. And the truth is, what comes to the owners, that's just how the world works. The fourth thing, oh no, it's the fifth thing, and that's we don't save enough money. But we don't save at all. And when we do that, we become best friends with broke, desperate, and stupid. Because one of the things we need to do is, you see, saving is not just putting money away for some abstract reason, right? under a pillow or something like that. Saving is, in essence, paying your future self, creating a space in time where your future self has money to use, especially if you save and invest. You're creating a space in time where your future self has money to use that doesn't require you to be working for that money to be available. So one of the things we need to get smart on is paying ourselves first and investing whatever we pay ourselves with. You see, each time you get your salary and you pay Zimra, the taxman, you buy groceries. You are in essence making those different entities wealthy. Why don't you add yourself to that li to the list of payees and make your future self that much better? The seventh, and that is some of us know it's not the first time we've been taught about saving, investing, uh, being mindful, thinking the right way about your potential and what you can do for the world. It's not the first time for most of us. We know this, but the problem is we don't do what we know. And information without execution is poverty, and a lot of people do. So one of the things you need to get smart on is acting on what we know. If you get information, then hypothetically you can save on your taxes by doing something different, do it. Because the more you do, and the less you just talk about something, the better things get. And we live in a country where some of the benefits that are out there from just being tax paying city are crazy. Some of the benefits that come from saving or owning companies, crazy. Some of the business opportunities, we were chatting with the team and we saw so many loopholes in our nation, it's about 
And that is trouble in many people's eyes. But to the smart person, that's an opportunity to build their legacy. And the last thing, we're going to land this plane on, on this one. We've allowed ourselves to get the wrong mindset about money. And we think we live in a world where there must be rich people, there must be poor people. And you've decided because of your upbringing or because of just how things are that you are going to represent the poor crowd. You think money has something to do with who you know or the family you were born in. And forget the fact that you have everything you need within you to transform the world. You are one decision away from becoming the person you were supposed to be. And that's really a person of abundance, not like so let's close it this way. If you don't come from a family with money, you can become, you can build the family that has money and change the legacy for your whole generation. Hopefully that helps you. My name is Terence, and I hope you are now educated. And before we sign up, I just want to give a big shout out to our new partner, EcoForce. And it is an amazing product called EcoForce Mist, your perfect skin partner. Really great for dealing with stuff like acne, um, bacteria, any fungi that comes onto your skin, wounds, you name it, seem like really a really great solution, totally natural. It's made from what your white blood cells produce to fight off bacteria, so definitely worth trying. You spray it as part of your skincare routine, and it should do wonders for you. We use it, and we love that they've partnered with us. Give them a try, and we'll see you next week.